Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Hey. Yeah, hey, bring everybody. me up. Hey, I want hello, to tell hello. everybody. Hey, my friend John did something that you're going to understand at church this last week. He walked out of the church after Mass, and then he turned around and went back in the church and then could not remember why he went back in the church. Could not for the life of me. And he kind of panicked. So he started blessing people all over the place. <laughs> so, you know, it's the same old story. He had a Monsignor moment. Ah. Oh. The show. Kaboom, kaboom. <laughs> The father joke. Since 2020, right. we've done plenty of virtual comedy shows online. And though the virus is slowing, we'll keep going because we've still got lots of hydroxychloroquine and ivermectin. Hello, and welcome to Virtual Comedy Show. Here are some etiquette guidelines for Virtual Comedy Show. Please arrive 15 minutes early. Please be quiet, except for laughing. We've been a Zoom meeting civilization for two dang years. You know the drill. Just be polite. We would like to see your face as part of the audience. Let's be social, not just distant. So get comfortable, plan to laugh, but not heckle, and let's make our semi-quarantine world a bit more normal for a little while. Thanks, and enjoy the Virtual Comedy Show. It's the Virtual Comedy Show, starring Brad Tassel and Steve Goody. Tonight, Brad and Steve welcome comedian Ryan Niemeller. Plus funny songs from John Trentis. And a patty melt from Patty Vasquez. And much, much more. Now, please welcome Brad Tessel. Oh. And the crowd goes melancholy. Hi, everybody. Let's see, let's see everybody. Look, hey, Ellen's back and Alice is doing something else. <laughs> and uh, but hey, Valerie's watching and Janice and Elena's excited and it's good to see you and it's great to have uh, Ryan uh, back. Ryan stayed at my house once and uh, he refused to sleep here. Ryan wasn't there. <laughs> you run away. <laughs> You're like, no, I'm not staying here. This is not good enough for me. <laughs> and uh, so it's beautiful. And John Trentes is back. It's a beautiful week. By the way, uh, as I said in the thing, yeah, we're all getting a little older. Uh, I I'm so old at this point that I pay fifty dollars a month. For a landline just to use it to call my cell phone when i can't find it <laughs> i have no i have no i never use it the only time I, and that is literally every day i think i do that every day so. oh, good. all right well hey a good start but things are going to fall down quick yes. so uh i've got some jokes we'll do those by the way welcome to the virtual comedy show everybody it's our 175th week uh, Steve, what is it by the way 114th week, Brad. 114. Can you, it's, you know what? You know when they can't Close. cancel you? <laughs> I don't know who they are. Everybody who's, they've tried, boy, to cancel this. So, okay. Well, let's get started, and it's going to start hard here. Uh, there have been 309 mass shootings in the United States this year since states like Texas and others passed laws to allow anyone to carry guns at any time and the Supreme Court striking down existing laws in states like New York. My question is, how's that going for you, NRA? How's that looking? How's that mm -hmm. helping? No, we're having more and more. And there have been zero good guy with a gun stoppings of mass shootings. Have you noticed that? Heck, mm -hmm. the good guy police with guns in Uvalde, they refuse to help. The only person with guts there was the mom who ran into the school and grabbed her kids to get them out. Right, everybody? Yep. I mean, so I have an idea. How about we have a good mom without a gun law? How about that? <laughs> have you noticed that most of these good guys with guns, when somebody else has a gun, they kind of turn into cowards, don't they? Isn't that kind of funny? You know, unless their vanilla latte doesn't have whip, then watch out. They're ready to shoot. So, uh. <laughs> There you go. That was just my announcement. There was no joke. Yeah. Isn't it weird when I when I do things uh, about stuff like that, it, I get pissed off and there's no joke? Okay, here we go. <laughs> Let's try one that might have a punchline. Actor hey. James Caan. Do we all love James? Remember James yes. Caan? Yes. Actor James Caan, best known for The Godfather, Elf, and Misery, has passed away at 82. Uh, I guess yep. you could say... He was given an offer by Santa. He couldn't refuse or they'd break his legs. Uh, <laughs> uh, ooh. Ooh. That's all we need yeah. right there, folks. Hashtag by the way, my condolences to his family because he was a tremendous, tremendous talent. And also, I hear a tough guy at, at the same time. Hey, what we don't know, I'm guessing because of all the stuff going on in America, what is going on in the UK 
Prime Minister Boris Johnson's former deputy whip, Chris Pincher, was accused of groping two men. Has anybody seen that? Mm -hmm. See, yeah. We don't find those things. By the way, I do want to say, if your job is whip and your name is Pincher, then groping <laughs> is a given. <laughs> oh. Okay, great. I don't want to stereotype. All right. <laughs> Next up, oh, by the way, Boris Johnson, we all know him, right? He's the prime minister. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ellen, are you saying something? He's good, yes. <laughs> Out of Boris there. Johnson will resign today or has resigned today. Johnson is a conservative who looks a lot like a certain orange menace. Yeah, I did. And has had so many scandals, <laughs> lies, and corruption that his next move after office is to star with Trump in a remake of The Parent Trap. <laughs> man will they drive giuliani crazy which one is which which one won't pay me <laughs> 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 all right took that one hard okay hey did you know did you know six out of ten u.s workers do their job from home most of the time now can you believe that everybody that's amazing wow. you know, many are asking if offices should be dropped completely. Now, we already know five of those six working at home have already dropped their pants uh, <laughs> since then. Uh, now, it's getting sad these days. People are literally only taking care of the top halves. That's all they're doing. It's like, it's like half of America now has a full body mullet. <laughs> <laughs> business on top and uncovered dingleberries on the bottom okay <laughs> oh dear my favorite breakfast cereal that's right uncovered dingleberries <laughs> cover your dingleberries and you're not going to have a good day okay oh god hey we're doing good it's going to fall apart now by the way it's significant it is significant that uh, Bobby Crummo, whatever his name was, the right-wing fascist 21-year-old Donnie cult member, oh. used to wear a Waldo costume to all the Trump rallies. It's significant because when he attended the rallies, all the maggoteers are pretending they never saw him. <laughs> the maggoteers, by the way. I'm good. I'm nice. Trump Tanyan. Uh, <laughs> now, as we know, Crumbag, whatever his name is, killed seven people during his rampage at the July 4th parade in Chicago and Highland Park. Uh, the Trump cult of liars are now trying to say that this guy was really a liberal Antifa mastermind who had spent years, <laughs> oh, yeah. he has spent years, even though he's only 21, he spent years masquerading as a Trump supporter, going to rallies and filling his social media with right-wing nonsense and fascist hate. Of course, to become a mastermind to a MAGA nut is a pretty low bar, you know? <laughs> Wait, you got teeth because you rubbed them brushes on them? <laughs> mastermind. Okay, so uh, by the way, uh, Cromo's uh, devious plan to hide that he was Biden's nephew, by the way, was so insidious that he even went so far as he painted, did you hear this, an eerie mural of a smiling gun dude on his his mother's garage and what the what the heck is, is somebody being stung by a wasp right now that's very good so, so back to what i was saying that nobody cared about so by the way his plan is so insidious but but the orange twat brigade were smart enough to see through it because they read it on jfk jr as vice president.com uh, <laughs> by the way they threw through that and they also they also they know they know that you know the 700 people just like this guy the capital riders were antifa except for the 700 who were arrested that trump is going to pardon because trump is still president even though biden is the cause of gas and stuff but so <laughs> this is all confusing but it will come out in two weeks with the new film, 200 more mules and a my pillow helmet. <laughs> okay. I wrote that and didn't have any faith in it, and I was correct. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is better. There is a report churning up the seas that Johnny Depp 
will return as Captain Sparrow in a 73rd Pirates of the Caribbean film. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, maybe it's seven. I don't know, but it just seems like 73. Disney is hoping to have a parlay with Depp after pretty much making him walk the plank and calling him everything but a scurvy dog during his trial. They were pretty rough. I don't know if you heard any of the things they said about Johnny Depp. Uh, but uh, $301 million is the offer, and that might be just enough booty to get Sparrow back on the pearl. Mm -hmm. uh, now, Depp, this is true, Depp told a reporter that $300 million and a million alpacas wouldn't get him back. Is, did you hear that? Uh, now, maybe we'll see Depp embark again. And if not, I'm sure American Pie 26 has an opening for Stifler's third cousin twice removed. <laughs> Stifler! St you all, all remember that? You all remember Stifler? Yes. Nope. yes. Okay. Ah, Santana collapsed on stage in Michigan. Did you see that? Oh, yep. Yeah. He yeah. was suffering heat exhaustion and dehydration. He is fine now. Fans commented on the fall. It wasn't smooth. <laughs> okay, let's try the next one. <laughs> the tape won't come off. Okay, I taped that one too hard. Elon Musk. Elon Musk can't keep his mouth or his pants closed. Have you seen that? Yep. He's just come out. He had two kids with one yep. of his executives last year. And Grimes also was having another one for him. Uh, that makes nine for the Tesla Lothario, we should call him. Uh, challenge accepted, yelled Nick Cannon as he ran into a woman's gym. <laughs> Nick's going to have five more. Uh, hey, by the way, did you all know uh, that there was a second mass shooting planned for the Dogwood Amphitheater in Richmond, Virginia on the 4th. And it was thwarted by a hero citizen. Did you see this? A hero citizen who called police after overhearing the plot by two men. Uh, police then arrested the men and found assault rifles and ammo stuffing one of their houses. Uh, an NRA spokesman said, keep your phone calls to yourself, Karen. <laughs> oh, yeah, they like these things. Okay. Yeah, that one, that one was tough, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, we've only got uh, 36 more, Ryan. I hope the dinner's not ready. <laughs> the World Health Organization might declare an emergency as monkeypox is spreading quickly, everybody. Uh, Alice is itching. Uh, the disease is passed with direct contact with infectious body fluids. Mm -hmm. By the way, infectious body fluids was also Steve Bannon's Secret Service code name. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. A woman, this is interesting, did y'all see this? A woman tried to rescue a chipmunk stuck in one of her windows by screaming at it. <laughs> yeah. Great, you saw this? When that didn't work, her dog actually picked it up and took it outside safely and dropped it on the back porch. I know. <laughs> Did anybody, I'm looking at oh, you. Wow. I'm very confused. Oh, this God. really happened. Now, the screaming woman was calmed when Dale came up and slapped her. <laughs> 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 By the way, the reports are false that all of her screams were, Alvin! <laughs> <laughs> Good. There's a moose. <laughs> oh, look, there's only one more. Steve, you ready? Oh, yes. Okay, good. <laughs> registration opened for those of you ready. Registration opened for those who want to hunt pythons in the Florida Everglades this summer. Anybody want to do that? Oh, yes. Yep. Up my list. Can't wait. It sounds like fun, said the snakes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Steve, bring yourself in. This is the virtual comedy show. Fantastic. Right. Three for 12. That's always good. Three that's, for 12. That's, hey, you're in the major leagues. That's right. Yeah. That's you you know do. what? Batting 300 is, is better it. than most people. Take so. it, man. I know. Yeah, that was a good walk out of the park. Well done. That's right. And we and, got uh, in, un in under 25 minutes. So, yeah. okay. Is it top three 10 time? Because I'm, I'm confused. Brad, not 300. It is. He's right. 
No math. Right, we'll have no math on this show. <laughs> How How dare you that's it. I'm getting average. rid of Brad. See what he brings out in you guys. No, it is not time for the top 10. It is time for this. Steve and Brad are into vocabulary. Cause too many people use words frivolously. But we'll need some definitions to speak properly. So that's why we're ripping off Balderdash. But we can't call it that for trademark reasons. So get ready. We're going to learn some new words in our glossary of virtual comedy terms. That's right. As we've Okay, been doing... wait a minute, Steve. I yeah. would like to announce that Steve... Hasn't told me the word this week. No, not a bit of it. Any definitions? You were too busy with stuff. Or Patty. Okay, I'll take myself. No, this out. this <laughs> one's all me. Well, I did get some outside help, just not from you guys. I went to professionals. <laughs> That's true. Anyway, what our definitions are. <laughs> if you're not familiar with this, and this may be the last installment of it, I'm, I'm getting a little weary of it myself. Ah, but. We're playing Balderdash, basically, and we're not going to do it right now. We'll do it later in the show, but this is just to warm you up for it. Uh, we're going to give you a complicated, difficult word that is actually a word that almost nobody has heard of, and four definitions, only one of them is correct, and whoever can guess the correct one in five seconds is going to win this, the virtual comedy show, Bell. <laughs> wow! Ooh, I'm playing. I want that bell. Now, a lot of people say, well, why can't you give us the word now? I'll tell you why we can't give you the word now. We can't tell you what the word is this early on, because you'll just look it up, and that's no fun. So here's a little hint which will help no one. The word is definitely not Genepap or Yadagon or Biblioclept. Got it? It's none of those. So don't even worry about those. Those will have nothing to do with this. They are completely out of bounds. And now it is time for... You know, I'm trying not to use bad language. We all try very hard not to use bad language. But this was a pretty effed up 4th of July. Mm. And, uh, and we're thinking maybe we should just, I've heard some people saying maybe we should just not bother with the 4th of July anymore. No, I think we need to keep doing it. But I think we need to rethink our priorities. So tonight's top 10 category is top 10 things we should do next 4th of July. Here we go. Number 10. Recreate the original 4th of July by forming a whole new country for the non-stupid. <laughs> number nine number nine number nine thank you see if we can send elon musk and jeff bezos up in a bottle rocket <laughs> That's the thought. Okay. Yeah, Dragon so far. <laughs> number eight let texas secede for <laughs> sake <laughs> yeah. number seven let Mar-a-Lago secede for the same reason. <laughs> Number six. Consider lobotomies for the rest of Florida. <laughs> Number five. Consider vasectomies for the rest of Florida. <laughs> Number four. Hey, I'm Cletus Johnson Joseph Bubba Trump Jr. And we have taken over this broadcast we's the maggoteers and with our russian friends we don't like what's going on here we don't like them facts we don't like them figures and we've taken over this show and ain't nothing you can do about it we're gonna take over forever we wait we're losing the feed hey you leave us this feed you're trump hey you trump come get me Hi. Get rid of the filibuster, pack the court, codify row, ban AR-15s for anyone under 90, ban magazines over three, and get this place back to resembling a country that deserves a birthday party. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's move on to something tasteful. I know something tasteful. It's John Trentis. John Trentis, everybody. Yay. Yay. Not that I've tasted him, but he's very tasteful. <laughs> oh, you never will. And he, yeah, and he is our musical guest, and let's do the musical oh. guest intro thingy. It's our musical guest, our musical guest. Gonna sing something funny, and then Steve will play something in between. Our musical guest, our musical guest. It's time for our musical guest. John Trentis. Hey, everybody. Hi, John. Hey, John. Hi, Steve. Hi. You know the drill. You're going to do a funny song that I got to answer it somehow without knowing what you're about to do, and then you'll do another funny song. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, just a thought before I get started. You know, I heard Sweden is joining NATO, and it's also going to be shipping more material to Ukraine. And that's the good news. The bad news is when Ukraine gets it, they're going to have to put it together. <laughs> <laughs> Sweden's got this down. Sweden's got this down to a science. They 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 include all the tools you need to assemble a tank, armored personnel carrier, uh, anti-aircraft battery. Here it is. 
All with one <laughs> Allen wrench. That's <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> all right. All right. Let's play a song. Beta Presswood. Yes, particle board. How it's. Uh, Steve and I wrote this one a long time ago, but it's it's an oldie but a goodie. <laughs> <laughs> she caught him last night with her best friend. Broke her heart in two when she walked in on them. But she don't want pity. She don't need whiskey. She's loading up the bed of her F-150. Saturday morning with the starlight driving. Bring your money if she's got bargains on oh, golf clubs, beer mugs, bucket full of spark plugs, Playboy shot glass, big mouth, Billy Bass, old Nintendo CB radio, cardboard box full of dirty videos, beat up football, Bambi hanging on a wall, 1959 gold top, Les Paul. A fool and his gold are about to be parted. She's taking all his stuff to the flea market. <laughs> he was almost to the Cheatham County line. He remembered that he left all his stuff behind. He spun that truck around, laid some rubber down. But not before that little girl cleaned him out. Saturday morning at the starlight driving. Bring your money, cause she's got bargains on velvet, Elvis, satellite dishes, ringside wrestling, season tickets, Harley V twin, Gibson mandolin, neon sign in the of a Heineken, 12 gauge shotgun, engine from a half pipe, action comics, Superman number one. A fool and his gold are about to be parted. She's taking all his stuff to the flea market. There's plenty of gear for fishing and a couple of hockey sticks. You can buy his dog ear first edition of how to pick how to up chicks. A fool and his gold are about to be parted. She's taking all his stuff to the flea market. Don Nice. Man. That was fun. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, so I think I have to do something that answers that, that has something to do with it. But what's interesting to th this week, just this week, I'm a, this will answer the two things you said just before you started the song. First of all, uh, you mentioned Ukraine. And then you also mentioned that we wrote that song together. Here's a song John and I wrote together very recently about the situation in Ukraine. And uh, let's see if I can get it right. Odessa on my way to Kiev. No, we didn't pick this fight. But we gotta make some Russians turn around and leave. So we're keeping Putin up at night. Go back to the USSR. We've gone a little too far, boy. Go back to the USSR. We knew you'd come along and try to grab this place like a pasty faced Stalin clone. But we've rallied our resistance right up in your face Comrade, take your butt back home Go back to the USSR You don't know how gutsy we are, boy Go back to the US Hey, take your BS Back to the USSR Well, our Ukraine kids will push your soldiers out They'll kick your red behind You Moscow to go on and scream and pout you must have lost your freaking mind, 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 mind. And then there's a guitar solo and then the rest of the song. And you can get that song on my new CD. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it there. Oops. And let John take it from here. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, John. Let me get rid of me. 
Oh, you're out. There you go. Okay, I'm back. Um, so, you know, there's this word that's been going around. I just have to comment on this. And, and it's, it's, it's a cute sounding word, but it's actually an insult. And you've heard it many times. The word is woke. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Are you woke yet? <laughs> you know, and, and it's a word that the, the, the conservatives use to insult the liberals. Uh, but the liberals don't have a, a similar cute sounding insult word for the conservatives. So I've come up with one. It, it took me a long time to think of this, but it had to be a word that was the opposite of woke. And um, it also had to be uh, sort of an explanation of, of why people have been acting a certain way for about <gasps> the last six years. And the word is stoned. <laughs> 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 But we're going to do something. It's only the second time this has happened live online. There's Q is back. Uh, we're going to do a Q drop live online. So first of all, the first thing we have to do is get the Q receiver. <laughs> Let's give it a shake here. Okay. Oh, boy. All right. And the, the, the mighty exalted Q says the following, and I quote, oh, this is kind of dirty. <laughs> all, right. all right, I'm gonna have to like abbreviate certain words, so let's let's do that. Okay. <laughs> all right, it says, and I quote, I can't do this anymore. The effing lost the election, and you're all in a cult. <laughs> oh, the thing's not working. Anyway, um okay. Uh this song is not a funny song. It's a topical song. In fact, it's a political song, and I don't usually write a whole lot of political songs because when you do, it's got a point of view, and half your half your audience wants to pat you on the back, the other half wants to beat you up in the parking lot. You don't have a parking lot. Well, that's why I'm playing it here. We'll put you in the waiting room and slap it around later. But I want to say, um, if you know, if you like, I said it has a point of view. If you agree with it, thank you very much. I appreciate that. If you don't agree with it, just know that. You know, I value your right to disagree with me. We have the First Amendment. Even if you're wrong. <laughs> this is called this is called Uncle Joe. This one goes out to my Uncle Joe. He went off to battle and never came home. Brave as he was, he was far from alone. You honor his memory whenever you vote. Brother John Lewis marched over that bridge where nightsticks and racists were waiting for him. Standing his ground as they did what they did, Fighting a fire he wouldn't outlive. My country, tis of thee, comes with no guarantees. The more that we disagree, the more mistakes we are making. By the dawn's early light, no matter who's wrong or who is right, no one will win this fight. My heart is breaking. Members of Congress ran for their lives from treasonous bastards with blood in their eyes. The greater their rage, the grander their lies. This is the way democracy dies. My country, tis of thee, comes with no guarantees. The more that we disagree, the more mistakes we are making. By the dawn's early light, no matter who's wrong or who is right, no one will win this fight. Is breaking. This one goes out to my Uncle Joe, went 
walked off to battle and never came home. Aw. Mm. Good job. John Trannis, ladies and gentlemen. Fantastic. Thank you, I sir. I have no pithy things to say right now. That was amazing. Mm. That was. John, can we find that at, find you? Can we find that at Trentus.com? Yep. Um, I'm going to put it up on Trentus.com right now. If you go on YouTube and, and search Uncle and Trentus, it'll, you'll find a video of me doing it. Okay. Yeah, and if you uh, if you go to my YouTube and subscribe, it won't help you find John's thing at all. So go ahead and do that. <laughs> Always helpful. Always helpful. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for John, everybody. Hey, John. As he, uh, and for Aaron, who's just off camera. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, aren't we all? Well, that was lovely. But now we're all excited. Where is oh, he? Oh, man. Who can find him first? I think it's I time. I'm not even looking. You find him. I'm getting ready for the intro. Ryan, Ryan, you need to uh, turn on your camera and stuff. Oh, now he disappeared. Oh, damn it. There Maybe we can is. have your brother do five minutes. Uh, no, we <laughs> there he is. Here he is. Ryan Niemeller, everybody. Go on, let's hear it. Ryan, your hair is shorter than I've usually seen. I, I'm, I apologize for that. No, I, mean, I, 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 I forgot I was supposed to run those by you because yeah, it always startles you're, you. You're supposed to, well, because my hair is the shortest I think it's ever been since I was three so uh <laughs> well well, well I, I forget with you that it like worries you because you know so many weird armed guys that if we change our hair you're like is that ted is that russ i don't know who it could possibly be yeah that's what i was thinking yes that's, that's, that's the way my mind goes what, yeah. what other guys i know with okay great so anyway ladies and gentlemen we all know ryan he was here before ryan by the way have you noticed this show now since you've been here, it has 35 no more intros than it had before. I, I did know the lot, lot, lot of lot of video production. That's very wait nice. Till, wait till you see what you get right now before you okay. start your set. Go ahead, Steve. Right. Here we go. <laughs> it's time for our big headliner. Got some funny, funny jokes to say. Oh, do a 10 minute set headliner. Man, I'm so glad that it's Thursday. Oh, hooray, everybody. How is everyone doing? Yay. Excellent. Okay. I, I'm, I'm very excited. I got to follow a really heartfelt song by John. <laughs> that, 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 that's a good, uh, good way to get right into the comedy. <laughs> I'm, I'm already a little pissed off that he stole my play the guitar idea. And now <laughs> he does that. So we'll make it work. No, no, I'm happy to be here. It's been a while since I did a Zoom show. I, uh, I, I forgot how I kind of like these. I'm not wearing pants right now, so it's like very comfortable <laughs> <laughs> that I just get to sit here and just do nothing. Um, uh, so, so I've been back on the road a little bit, and uh, I, I always liked the Zoom shows. I know a lot of people kind of like, you know, didn't like. They were like, oh, it's not even real common. I loved them, but they uh, all the Zoom shows I did the last couple of years, they made me cocky. <laughs> um, like with hecklers, for instance, because it is impossible to be heckled during a Zoom show. If one of you starts heckling, there's a moderator, boom, mute, you're done. Suck it. <laughs> like you're gone. That's the end of that. Right but now down. I'm getting on the road. There's no moderator there <laughs> to mute. And it's worrying me. And it's not even that I'm being heckled. Um, what I'm learning as I'm getting back out there on the road is that as a society, collectively, because of the lockdowns, we all forgot how to whisper. <laughs> like, like, like nobody has an inside voice anymore. <laughs> so, uh, the, the first show I did back, this was late 2020. So I was already nervous. We still didn't know exactly what was going on. This was pre-vaccine, pre all of that. And I'm doing this show and I'm already nervous because I hadn't performed in front of people for like nine months. So I'm already trying to get that rust off. And I'm just going, okay, I'm getting my legs back under me. I'm like 15 minutes in. I'm in the middle of a joke. And at one point in the back of the room, I just heard this woman go, uh, should we get the chicken tenders? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yes, and you should choke on them and die. So that doesn't happen again. Like, that is way too much energy for chicken tenders. Like, I think you guys, I, I know Zoom can make, like, it's a little different. But you can tell by looking at me. I'm a man who loves some chicken tenders, all right? Like, you do not get this physique without figuring out tendies, all right? But she yelled about these chicken tenders as if she just found out she was pregnant with her first child. Like, bring it down slightly is all I ask. 
Uh, I only got heckled one time during a Zoom show, and the woman was so creative with how she did it, wasn't even mad. Just tipped my cap. So um, so I did, I did a, a Zoom show, and there was this woman who was in the Zoom show who, if I had to guess, was about 140 years old. <laughs> oh. so, I don't know which one of her grandkids set up the Zoom for her. But like, like legitimately, it was cool that she was there. You could tell she liked me on America's Got Talent. Like, and she's someone who's not going to go to a comedy club. So it was like a cool moment that like I'm in her living room. She gets to see somebody she likes from TV in person, like from home. Uh, she hated me. <laughs> he did not like me at all. I, uh, well, because well, like during the show, uh, th this was like, you know, everything was locked down. So I was a little dirtier. I'm a little dirtier. Uh, I'll be clean for Brad's sake because he asked me to be. But I'm a little dirtier on my live show than AGT, and uh, I apologize if anyone is upset by that. But I'm going to tell you now, the reason that I'm dirtier in person than I was on AGT is that I did not win a million dollars. That's really dirty. it. That, that's really it. If, if you guys don't want me to curse, that's awesome. Starting bid, $1 million. I will talk about whatever you want. Until <laughs> so then, though, we're going to be all right. Uh, so, so, so I, my first joke I do is pretty dirty and this woman hates it. But like, she, like I said, she knew she couldn't heckle. Like she was muted. She verbally couldn't heckle. So the way that she, what she did though, to show that she hated it, uh, it was so clever. I looked at a little viewing window after the joke and all she was doing was disappointedly knitting. <laughs> <laughs> like nothing will make you feel worse about yourself than when someone hates you so much that they're like screw it i'm making a scarf in june i don't even janice care <laughs> it was okay, very janice, impressive it. you can knit janice <laughs> uh, I, i've had a pretty good year i've had a pretty good year uh, last year i got engaged Everyone, that's exciting uh, yeah, that's exciting i'm very excited to be engaged she's my dream woman she's my soulmate i'm excited to spend the rest of my All life right. with her uh, I don't know when I'm going to tell her about my arms. <laughs> <laughs> We've been together about two years now. I've been wearing nothing but sweatshirts and cloaks. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the ring ceremony is the latest I could tell her, probably. <laughs> like, that's <laughs> the last second. It's like, blah! <laughs> it's too late. Your family's here. <laughs> Now, 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 everyone, that might not have been your favorite joke you've heard tonight so far, but I appreciate that you all knew that was a joke, correct? Right. I, I am not hiding my very obvious arm disability from the love of my life for multiple years. We're on the same page, correct? Um, the night we got engaged, I put that joke on Twitter, almost exactly like you just heard it now. And everyone, like the response I got, it was either congratulations or laughs, except for one person who did not get it at all. And and I double checked to make sure they weren't just like being sarcastic or messing with me. But I go look at their Twitter profile. It was just years of them not getting stuff. <laughs> just like, what do you mean Bruce Willis was dead the whole time? Just like years of that. <laughs> the whole time. So when I put that joke up about when am I going to tell my new fiance about my arms, this person responded with a, how does she not know? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know how to respond to that. I was just like, she's really stupid. That's how, like, how does she not know? It's so obvious. <laughs> she just thinks I'm the luckiest person in the world. Like, how do you get front row parking every time, Ryan? <laughs> uh, I appreciate from what I heard about half of you got that. Thank you. Uh, the other half, like, how do you get front row parking? Is there like a like a monthly club or something? It's like a. I'm glad I can tell you guys this joke. I'm glad I can tell you guys this joke uh, on here because I, I live near Los Angeles now. I can't tell people I have handicap parking here because the parking's so bad they get mad at me for it. Oh, oh dear! So I'll be in LA and I'll be like, "Yeah, I got handicap parking." They're like, "Your legs look fine, asshole!" And I'm like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, did you just hate crime me on the street <laughs> like, what just happened there uh in, in, in full, full disclosure full disclosure uh, i still just like to tell the engagement joke we are officially married now we are officially Yay! married. Right. Oh, thank you we got married for the very romantic reason that i now have health insurance ah, there you go. Hey. But, Harry, me too yeah, yes, yeah, so I just turned 40. That's a that that's the friends with benefits you want now at this age. Like that's that's what you're looking at. 
I, I, I did just turn 40. I'm very excited about turning 40. I, I know it's a little different for guys, but like I wasn't upset with turning 40. Like I'm fine with it. It's perfectly fine. Uh, I do hate when people will say things like, well, 40 is the new 30. <laughs> like no, like 40 is not. not old, but that's ridiculous because uh, I don't remember at 30 a sneeze possibly making me shit my pants. Like that <laughs> is <laughs> that, that that is a very new 40 year old thing is all I'm saying. Uh, 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 so, so we are uh, we are married now. Uh, I'm in a mixed couple, which is very exciting. I'm in a mixed couple uh, in that she has arms and I do not. <laughs> I think it's called interspecies. I believe that is the phrase. Um, I thought I thought married an able-bodied woman. I thought I was going to get the perks out of this. Like, like I was like, sweet. She has arms. Tied shoes are back on the table. Hell yeah. <laughs> but she is taking way more advantage of this than I am. It is ridiculous. So like I said, uh, we live near Los Angeles. And now anytime we go out anywhere, my wife makes me drive because I get the good parking. <laughs> Which I don't think is fair, nor does my Nissan Sentra. It's struggling. But I'm happy to do it. Because I love her. I love her very much. Um, but here's the thing. Um, we get a flat tire. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> You're up, honey. That's going to be on you. That is not a skill set that I ever learned. I'm not very good with tools, all right? And I blame my dad for that. I blame my dad. I, I physically, I probably, like, I know eventually I could probably learn to change a tire if I had to. But like my dad never taught me this stuff because my dad was one of those guys. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of you, you might be this person or you have parents that did this too. My dad was so cheap that like if something in our house broke, he would say, I'm going to fix this. I'm not paying somebody. But then instead of fixing it, he would drink a 24 case of old Milwaukee. <laughs> <laughs> sort of uh, so uh, the best example I have, I'm going to go a little over time. I apologize, but I want to tell Do the rest of the story. Um, <laughs> So the best example of this, I was about eight years old uh, and I grew up in a trailer, uh, not to brag, but uh, <laughs> single wide, big deal, head carpet and everything. Uh, when I was about eight years old, uh, our trailer developed a hole uh, in the bathroom uh, right in front of the toilet. Wow. Um, just like a, just a hole going to the ground. And that, that like, I, I don't own a home yet myself. But even not knowing about that, I feel a hole in front of your one toilet. That's a code red emergency. That's something you try to fix pretty quickly. Uh, but my dad, how he fixed it then is he took a, just a piece of plywood and laid it over the hole. <laughs> And then just went on with his life. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and that's why one morning uh, I woke up and had a possum on my pillow. Oh my God. <laughs> Which is 100% oh, wow. true. Uh, I woke up and, like, the possum, he just looked at me in the face, just right there. And um, here, here's the thing with this possum like, normally, possums, if like, like they're scared of humans. If they yeah. see human, they're going to run away. But when I woke up and went, ah, the possum just looked at me like, sup, bro. <laughs> Man, that was not the first night he was in there. <laughs> Some basic home improvement skills. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Ryan Neymar, thank you guys so much. I appreciate you. Wow. <laughs> Oh that man, that was great. Oh, Matt, Steve, look what we did. I know. I that right possum was that. good eating. Gotcha. Don't <laughs> <Jerry> <laughs> not gone yet. Hold on. Yeah, I'm, I'm still here. I'm not going okay, anywhere. That's great. So we. All right. We, hey, that was our first big mix-up of the show, though. So that was good. <laughs> not bad. Yeah, we went through, Ryan, <laughs> that was that was very funny. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm I appreciate glad it. you. Going for you it. went a little blue at the end, and I'm glad. I thought. That Thank was you. Good. So, so I tried to keep it like it gets a lot more blue than that. Yeah. But <laughs> I wanted to respect the fine people how here. Old, how old is your wife? What's what? Give me. What, I, uh, uh, she is guys. 38, so she's 38. a little younger. So than you're me. about the same age. She's not young or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. We had actually dated back when we were in college and kind of drifted apart. And then, um, well, we kind of stayed in touch a little bit here and there. She oh, got wow. married, all this stuff. But then we reconnected, actually, because she she's from California. We reconnected when I did America's Got Talent. I brought, I invited her to the taping of the audition, and luckily it went well because that <laughs> wouldn't have. Uh... <laughs> she was like, she was like, okay, now you're a little bit famous. Why not? What the hell? Oh, I mean, it, it's funny <laughs> that, like, I, I think she would still love me regardless. But like, yes. 
It would have been it would have been a hard sell if I would have got four X's and booed That's out of the right, building. Yeah. It would have been a little trickier. <laughs> Simon Cowell's like, happen. no, no, that was horrible. <laughs> no, I hope if someone you're in love with is here tonight that they disown you. Like, oh, it's very specific, Simon. <laughs> and now, now that the two of you are now the two of you are married, is she going to divorce the other guy? <laughs> uh, here's hoping i'm still holding off <laughs> or we have to move to utah or we got to move to utah one or the other set, so well, that was great so ryan what are you what, what are you up to soon or what what are you doing uh just touring a lot you can go to cripplethreat.com for my uh my dates uh things coming up soon if you happen to be in the california area i'm at the brea improv july 31st mm -hmm. uh, then i'm doing a little midwest tour in august august 10th i'm at summit city comedy club in fort wayne August wow. 11th at Louisville Comedy Club in Louisville, Kentucky. They love it, when it that way. Um, then uh, the 12th of August, I'm in Washington, Indiana at Aces. The 13th, I'm up in my hometown of DeMott, Indiana, doing their Touch of Dutch Festival. And then August 14th, I will be at Hilarities in Cleveland, Ohio. Everybody oh, got great. all that? Yes. Yes. Write that got down. It. Well, go to, go to cripplethreat.com. And uh, and you can find everything about Ryan. And if you're into video games, uh, you you how many video games do you have, by the way? I uh, have made a master list. That's what I've worked on the last mm -hmm. couple months. Uh, I am over five thousand now. 5, wow. wow! Yeah, th th this whole wall over here that you can't see. This looks pretty dead because I'm still redecorating. There's probably about two thousand of them right there. Man, I'm Man, still playing think, solitaire on my phone. I think that's going to be your third million. Yeah, yeah I, I, I know that my wife loves me because I have two game rooms right now. Yeah. This room yeah. and then oh. one across the hall from that's here. Right, yeah. she, she has to love me because yeah, she, no one should put up with this. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a Ryan. Ryan well. Thank you, everybody. All right. Well, and look who it is. Can you find I him? found Patty. Oh, there he is. I Yay. found Patty. And I'll All right. Hey, Patty. Hi, Patty. Patty, you're on the roof. Patty's muted. Mm -hmm. You're muted, Patty. Could you kindly unmute? There you there go. She is. Hi. Wow, it's beautiful. Ooh, Where are you? At the beach. I well, I'll tell you in a minute. I will make it part of my rant. Oh, well, All right. let's rant away. Okay. <laughs> it's time for a Patty melt with Patty Vasquez. Patty Vasquez from global conflicts to greenhouse gases. The folks refusing to wear masks says, and politicians getting caught grabbing ass says. She's melting down, it's a Patty Vasquez, Patty Melt. I'm doing a rooftop Abbey Road show. <laughs> it's not. I am actually right next to Lake Michigan. I'm right there. I can actually reach out and touch it. Oh, is it right there? Right there. <laughs> the, uh, I am at Oak Street Beach, which is the swanky beach in Chicago. It's right, the, right in the Gold Coast at the end of Michigan Avenue. And in 1989, 1990, I was a lifeguard right there at North Avenue Beach, which was a little working class beach, which is where all the gangs went to fight. And now they go to shoot and it's, it's fine. Um, <laughs> oh God. It was actually, I've told people it's the greatest job I've ever had. I love being a lifeguard. I love being a comic, but being a lifeguard was amazing. Although I wasn't great at it. Every time someone would start to drown, I'd be like, oh my God, I just had lunch. I am so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I got to wait at least a half an hour. I don't want to cramp up out there, but it, it was a, uh, it was a great job, and the thing is, this year in Chicago, and I know it's happening nationwide, we are having a lifeguard shortage. Uh, nationally, it's because of the wages. And all my lifeguard friends, we have our page, and they're like, when I was a guard, we were only making $3 an hour. These kids don't want to work. So I Googled, and that guard worked in 1968 when the minimum wage was five. So he was making three times the minimum wage. They're paying $0.88 cents more than, than the minimum. They're paying $15.88 for a kid to sit in the sun for eight hours possibly run and save somebody and everyone's like eh well you know what why 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 won't you work in the sun why won't you and also maybe perhaps there was an investigation of deep uh and long and sustained sexual harassment and assault and maybe my journal from 1989 to 1990 is state's evidence now so maybe there's a yeah. thing Ooh. <laughs> yeah Ooh. it's a true story so i uh anyway i'm here because I, I i'm at the hospital with my son uh declan who uh, i think we talked about this he has not walked in uh, almost eight weeks and by the way absolute i i will say our superpower is having the handicap placard to we part i'm like i can't okay, get really dark i'm like are all the cripples out today when they're all taken i'm like Wait, well, how are they all at great america today <laughs> so <laughs> i'm like what and i and i will say this like I, we get out of the car people will see me pull up and not see declan and I see them waiting. And you guys know me. I'm waiting for a fight. I am waiting for a fight. 
And uh, I've had people say, I, you don't seem like you need a spot. And then I open the, the, uh, the minivan door and I'm like, oh, there you go. Now what do you want to say? Did you start your day saying I'm going to be a jerk to a special needs mom at Great America? Did you? Did you? <laughs> I'm fine. So here's what's happening. So Declan's in the <laughs> hospital. And uh, earlier before the show, Brad asked how it was going. And I told him it's not worse. So I really, I don't have a baseline for anybody. I will say there's an army of specialists that keep coming in our room, neurologists, orthopedic th- surgeons, uh, can eat, like all these people from PT. I will, his spine surgeon and surgeon came, I'm fine. His spine surgeon <laughs> came by and basically said, uh, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't anything I did four years ago, which is great. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> It is. Uh, I can't imagine what this is like for anybody else. We have health insurance. I have a big support team. There are kids on this floor whose parents can't be there because they're working. I can come down and have a Paloma. I'm sorry. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and I was here by his bedside uh, while the, the shooting happened in Highland Park. Now, I live not that close, about 30 minutes from Highland Park. And I had a lot of friends that were at the parade. Uh, one of them was hosting it. Uh, my friend Jessica Antis was actually the MC of the parade. And this woman, and there are probably dozens, if not hundreds, of stories of heroes we might never learn. But Jessica was the MC, ran off the stage when she heard the gunfire, saw a 90 year old veteran struggling to get off the stage, ran back and got him to safety. Um, and I've been talking about this on my show all weekend. The, of course, the conservatives are calling, like, it's legal. It's legal for him to buy that gun. So you, what are you going to do? Take away all the guns? Yeah, I want your gun. It's not this kid was at Trump rallies. It's not that he was uh, on the some 4chan or whatever. It's the guns. It's the guns. It's the guns. It's the guns. I don't have to tell you. I, did I mention it's the guns? I just want you to know, possibly the guns. I'm not swearing. I'm mostly saying guns it over and over again in lieu of saying something else. It's the guns. Uh, I just, um, there's no reason. I, I am so frustrated and angry and sad. Uh, and by the way, I'm going to go back to the health insurance thing. That's also why I got married. I got married in uh, 2000. <laughs> my, Steve proposed, and I was like, do you have dental? Because I feel a cavity coming out. <laughs> <laughs> and then he lost his job in 2008. And then we had Cobra, which is accurate. Your healthcare should be named. Everything is going to bite you in the ass. Yeah. So <laughs> what I've learned is that I have really good car insurance. So if I ever lose my insurance, account, I'm gonna, if I get sick, I'm going to make sure I'm in my car. That's my patty melt, everybody. Patty Vasquez. <laughs> Wow. So, uh, Patty, I do have one question. Uh, yeah. Is it the guns? <laughs> it's the guns. I think it's the, it's guns. the guns. By the way, what, what building is that, everybody? Can you see that? Oh, wow. The Sears Tower. Yeah. That's beautiful. No, it's your hand no that's, that's oh, the hand Yes. Yeah. So, so, Patty, it's a good thing you and Ryan didn't meet in college or you'd both be dying because you'd be. <laughs> We'd have a lot of trouble, yeah. <laughs> you'd give you a lot of trouble dating each other. Yeah. He likes them younger. <laughs> yes. He does. Yeah, I was going to say, you're, we're way too old for, for Ryan and his group. Way too old. Way too old. You look great, though. I think. You, you, Can you hear me okay? Because they just turned the music up. You look I think great. They about you could be 38. Does everyone agree that Patty looks Absolutely. like she could be 38? And can I say, yeah. I've got a two sentence thing, so don't jump in the middle. Uh, I think you look awesome tonight with the hair because it's the buns. It's the buns. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> got the hair up. Well, what, how hot out is it right now? Oh, it's beautiful out. It's a, there's a breeze. It's absolutely gorgeous out. So this is the, this is really is the, the oh, so the beach closes at seven and people keep swimming. So I'm trying really hard not to get out there and be like, everyone be careful. Anyway, <laughs> come in closer, come and work and see you. I just had a sandwich. Go drag them in. So. Exactly. All right, Patty. Some... Well, All get right. back there and get drunk and go back to the hospital room. Yeah. Be the drunken <laughs> yeah. mom. We know you are. Yeah, yeah. I'll be listening. <laughs> be the drunken right. mom. We know you are. All right. So All right, hey, Steve, I forgot what's next. Is it's it time to, to get on with the game show portion of the show. Let's do this. It's time for the mystery word for tonight and for definitions. Only one of which is right. Brad says you'll never get it, but Steve thinks you might. And the mystery word is taco missile. That's correct. Ooh. Tonight's mystery wow. word is Cockle missile. You've got five seconds to type in A, B, C, or D after I give you the following four definitions. Three of them are fake. One of them is real. And everybody who gets it right, it's not just one prize. Everybody who gets it right gets a bell. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Is it A? Uh, Eric Trump's FBI code name. <laughs> <laughs> Brad and I are writing the same jokes this week. Yeah, that's right. B, is it? A typo that's led to some very awkward Christmas parties. <laughs> I'll let you live with that for a second. Is it C? 
an unapproved treatment for testicular cancer? <laughs> or is it D, a raccoon-like animal that is partial to sirloin? You have five seconds. Type A, B, C, or D into the chat, and somebody's going to win some stuff. I was going to do a, a cockamissile is uh, what Matt Gates keeps telling young girls at high schools. I got <laughs> All right, time is up. Let's find out the correct answer. What does cockamissile mean? Is it? I'm going to guess it's D. It's D. Yeah. It's the animal that oh. likes the sirloin. <laughs> Wait, so got a question. Wait, like wow. everybody said D, right? Got a surprising number of people who did not say D. Nice wow, job, drinkers. You had we more than Kevin one. didn't How get it right. Ellen didn't have? get it right. Michelle didn't get it right. Everybody else. My dad got it right. All right. How the all right. Patty say? By the way, oh gosh, that's all that matters to me. So wait, how many? That's where you got the word from, Steve. Ah, (laughs) I see what you're doing, making it more awkward than it needs to be. Thank (laughs) you, Kevin. But back to my question: How many bells do you have to give out? As many as we need, because as you know, every week we give away as many prizes as we have winners, and every week I fail to mail them out. Oh, okay, good. (laughs) Good. Okay, that's all I wanted to hear. Okay, I'll just. No, this is what you want to hear. I just wanted to make sure that you actually never sent anything. That's um, good. Who, me? Are you kidding yeah, me? Okay, good. Speaking of not sending anything and being broke, it is now time for someone to beg for money, so I'm going to okay. go away. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Brad Tassel, and as we've learned tonight, we need $1 million so Ryan Niemiller will say the F word. <laughs> so send that in. He promises to do that. We'll need $1 million. Also, uh, he lives in San Diego now, and that his Ooh. rent alone is about 6000 a month. So please... <laughs> Send us that money. And John Trentis, you know, uh, he needs cash. Uh, John, what do, you, what do you need money for? He needs to buy a parking lot so he can get beat up. That's right. He needs to buy a parking lot so he, gets, yes, he, can, so he can get a state. So, so send us money. And also, Steve uh, needs a couple bells. I think that's Darn right. Uh, I've got the bell free. I need the bells. The bells. And, uh, and health insurance. Steve, yeah, what, do you do? what is your health insurance, Steve? A Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee, thank you, which covers a COVID test every week and nothing else. Is that, a, is that an Obamacare? Yes, it is. Obama so that's what I say. If you're out there in Facebook land, go to virtualcomedyshow.com, click donate to the comics, and you can help us all out and keep this show going for another 114 weeks, by the way. That leads me to also say, Steve, are we going to talk about the fact that this show is going to be on Tuesday in just what? Yes. We got two 20... Tuesdays coming up. Hang on. Let me bring let me yourself join you. back in as I say I'm going to bring myself back in this. and I'm going to look at the old calendar look here. Look at the old calendar. Well, I say send us money and uh, we'll have the show on Tuesday. For the reasons of scheduling, because Brad and I are going to be on the road going to Edinburgh for the Fringe Festival to make it Halloween in August because that's what they need. <laughs> so ordinarily we're on Thursdays. As you know, it's Thursday every week, except for the last week of, of July. We'll 26th. be on the Tuesday, Tuesday the 26th, rather than Thursday the 28th. So last week of July will be a Tuesday, and the third week of August, the 16th rather than the 18th, will also be a Tuesday. But we'll tell you again, don't got to write it down. Just want to let you know now, so it won't be a surprise then. In two weeks, right. we'll be on Tuesday. And we have already October. told our guests, so they Yes, know. we're all good on that. And we're the musical guests on we the are. 26th, so, mm-hmm. so that's great. So I think we can All right, it. well, that's been fun. Is there anything yeah. else before we go? Yeah, it's time for another dumb song. Oh, yeah. We had a lot of fun with vocabulary, but this song is even more annoying as chipmunks. <laughs> How about another dumb song from Steve for no reason? Yes, oh, and yeah. as we did last week, I'm going to do it again in the name of shameless self-promotion. Here's my new CD that's coming out Ooh, on July 15th. It is available for pre-order now. Hey. And if you order it now, you can get it in three weeks with no shipping. You can ask uh, Kevin and Liz about that. Also, Alice mm-hmm. and... Uh, Somebody else ordered it, and now I can't remember. I feel bad. Oh, Janice. That's right. So here's a commercial for that. Bartleby Records presents the 35th album of Nutty Crap from Steve Goody. That's right. Top 10 songs that Steve has come up with since his last CD, plus six more, has all your favorites. We gotta make some Russians turn around and leave. So we're keeping Putin up at night. Go back to the USSR. Holy Moses, there's holes in my clothes. I'm showing so much skin. I'm practically a Kardashian. My neighbor's wiener dog yaps all night long So to keep from killing him, I wrote him a song Yo. It's available now at www.stevegoody.com Coffee cups, slurpy cups, Dr. Pepper, 7-Up, mascara, lipstick, eyeliner, cover-up Glitter, 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 glitter Um, I was enjoying the song and then it got to the bridge which became complicated and loud And now I don't understand what's going on anymore The official release date is July 15th 
But if you order your copy today, you'll get the download version immediately and the physical disc in three weeks with free shipping. Wow. Welcome to the Bachelor Party Capital of the World, Nashville, Tennessee. Go back to the USSR. That's right. Order your copy of Top 10 Songs that Steve has come up with since his last CD, plus six more, today at www.stevegoody.com and get the shipping for free. Operators are standing by. And you know, I got to say, I'm so pleased with myself that I cranked it up for that because I was enjoying <laughs> the sound of the music. I think we're right. everybody's ready to get it, Steve. I think that's fantastic. <laughs> Feel good about songs. By the way, you can also get my novel, Hell to Pay, which nobody else has ever bought. <laughs> my only and if you do sell that, I will crank it up for that, too. Yeah, well, my only book has only sold seven copies. And, hey, go. by the way, Ryan, I'm glad you're still here. Uh, your wife wants dinner. You got to get to... Yeah, so get the hell out of here. What's wrong wife, with you? Get out of here. She's she's mad. She's going to be mad at us. Go it's ahead, time dinner. to get to that drive through Let's do it. <laughs> All right. It's time for the dumbest joke. Worst joke. Worst joke. Worst joke. Worst joke. That was the worst joke ever! <laughs> Two chihuahuas were married in Cheshire, England. They exchanged <laughs> vows. They exchanged vows and rings and sausages. They had an eight-tier dog-friendly cake. They were surrounded by more than 90 dog friends. And the wedding cost thousands of pounds. 80% of that money was for poop bags. <laughs> Have a very merry Thursday. It's a special time of week. When Thursday bells are peeling and life no longer seems so bleak, let's open up our presents and carve our Thursday goose and wait for Father Thursday to arrive upon his moose. You know, we tried to incorporate all the wonderful family traditions that people associate with Thursday. Thursday comes but once a week, but do not shed a tear. Cause there are more than 50 Thursdays packed in every year. And every single one of them is full of mirth and glee. So stuff your face and break some wind and join the reverie. Have a very merry Thursday, put on your orange fez And decorate the Thursday tree with milk, bone, spam, and pez Once you've curled your mustache and donned your Thursday clothes I'll catch you neat the mistletoe and punch you in the nose Merry Thursday!